Hey, what's up, City fam? I'm on City, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to be reviewing perimeter defense. What should we expect in NBA 2K22 in regards to perimeter defense? We're going to be reviewing the course side report given to us by 2K prior to the release of NBA 2K21 because we got a good idea of what 2K21 on Next Gen had to offer us, and it was very different from what they sold us in the course side reports. And that's what I want to review. So that way, when we get the court side report very soon on gameplay for NBA 2K22, we know how to translate that language that 2K likes to speak. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go over perimeter defense, but the first topic here is dribble movement because to understand perimeter defense and how the development team approached it is better to get a good look on how they approached the dribbler, the ball handler. So that way you could understand their logic between the ball handler and the actual perimeter defender so let's go over into dribble movement the dribbler was rebuilt from the ground up for next gen and I, I think a lot of you guys could agree with that statement the dribbling was different on next gen I don't know if that was a good or bad thing a lot of people feel it was a bad thing some dribble heads like I was just watching Steezo's last video feels that there's a lot of depth in the dribbling for 2k21 on next gen but it's easier for people to get their dribble moves off and actually there's a a bit more cohesiveness i want to stress here that this is mike wang presenting this course side report so that you guys know who's actually speaking on the changes made for 2k21 the aspect of dribble movement that excites me the most is the predictability and consistency of it and i could agree with that statement and we're talking about dribble movement so we can get a better understanding on how they approach perimeter defense and the contrast between dribble movement the ball handler and the perimeter defender they go on to say it's much easier to go exactly where you want on the floor and in the manner that you'd expect to get there and i could agree with that statement dribbling is a lot easier on nba 2k21 for next gen movement and moves work cohesively together player speeds are more accurate to real life and the sense of weight feels more realistic i think anybody can get on 2k21 and learn how to dribble and string some dribble moves together for a combo one of the things that i don't necessarily agree with is player speeds are more accurate to real life and the sense of weight feels more realistic if that was true then you'll have guard speeds with the ball and we're talking about ball handlers those speeds will be tremendously different than the speeds of a 6-7 and as you guys know 6-7 demigods are going absolutely insane you could even go insane with a 6-8 demigod out there everybody had pretty much the same power forward type of build for NBA 2k 21 on next gen and if that was actually true if this was a true statement remember we're trying to review what was said to us in the past and how they approached the game and sold us the game we're trying to take in all that information match it up with what we received in nba 2k 21 the actual gameplay mechanics and realize that they're two completely different things there's a lot of six seven demigods out there and the regular guard build that we're normally used to who handles the ball became obsolete in NBA 2K21 for next gen. So now that we understand dribble movement, now we could dive deeper into perimeter defense. So let's do that. It's hard to distinguish my players that have a high amount of defensive attributes and a substantial amount of defensive badges from a player that I bring out that barely has any defensive attributes and very few defensive badges. It goes on to say improve pathing, cuts, and stops. Make defenders feel feel more grounded and fix a lot of the sliding from the previous generation sliding has taken a huge change there was a huge upgrade in sliding although i'm sure a lot of you guys out there are like but i'm still sliding it's not the type of sliding that we experienced in previous versions of 2K where if you held turbo while you went in one direction, you were completely gone taking five or six extra steps. Now your sliding is more so in how you spam your box button and a lot of you guys like to spam that steal button. But um, you know, a lot of it is more so based in that you don't experience the same type of sliding. You may not have full control of your player. I do agree with them saying that you feel 
feel more grounded, but I'm referring to feeling like you're stuck in the mud. And that's what I think a lot of us feel like out there. There's really not much responsiveness when you just want to actually move your player. In comparison to the ball handler that's in front of us, blowing by us with a speed boost, you feel just stuck in the mud. So I don't necessarily agree with that. And I hope they change that for NBA 2K22. It says updated player size detection logic and greater emphasis on player differentiation. Bigs move like bigs and guards move like guards. This includes a lot new animation content to support signature motion styles. And again, I don't really see a huge difference between the guard build and the 6-7 build. And we know guards could go up in height as well. But we're talking about we're creating power forward builds out there with a tremendous amount of weight in comparison to guard builds. And you really don't see a difference in speed from the guard build to the actual power forward build. And that needs to change. Although there is a ton of different builds at the power forward position, we're just tired of the six, seven, six, eights. We want to see variety in the builds out there. We want to be able to differentiate between speeds on guard builds versus power forward builds. Let me know if you guys feel the same way. I think we want to see more variety. I want to see more variety. I don't want to play the same game over and over where the offense can do almost everything and the defense perimeter defense to interior defense is extremely limited i don't think interior defense has reached its full potential in what 2k can offer us but perimeter defense was a little better this year in regards to sliding around the court actual one-on-one -on -one play irrelevant it's like no player out there can be a defender if you go one-on-one -on -one, the offense is gonna win maybe 90 percent of the time that's just how it is on 2k21 is heavily offensive oriented and i'm hoping that 2k can change that for nba 2k22 because as perimeter defenders we need to feel like we're we're an asset for our team out there not just bringing out a perimeter defender to get blown by by a speed boost there's no body ups there's no clamp ups i don't want you guys to forget that they mentioned this new foot planting technology prior to the release of nba 2k21 i'm sure they're going to revisit it in nba 2k22 so let's review what they have to say about foot planting i think they're going to follow up the defense for nba 2k21 but just try to advance it a bit more and make it a bit more responsive for nba 2k22 but as far as foot planting goes it says sliding and basketball is no good but it's something we've had to live with in the past because of limitations in technology i'm happy to say that the next gen version of nba 2k21 takes a huge leap in that department our engineers rewrote our foot planning tech from scratch and it led to one of the most striking visual improvements when you compare next gen to previous generations players can now take procedural steps instead of sliding their feet when they need to make micro adjustments i love seeing proper footwork as players are making hard cuts accelerating stopping even just standing and making subtle movements in place i'm really hoping that they can adjust this foot planning technology that they've incorporated into nba 2k21 advance it implement it properly because i like the direction that they're going with limited sliding but we need to be able our, a defender needs to be able to be responsive to our cues on our controller without that responsiveness we stay stuck in the mud and the offense continues to just blow right past us and we just tired of it we don't want to see that for nba 2k22 we want to be an asset on defense we want our defense to be responsive it's always a tricky balance trying to accurately model the cat and mouse game between the offense and the defense our goal with body ups was to highlight the improvements that we were able to make to both dribbling and defense movement to that end it meant less canned interactions and doing a better job of respecting user control this is the second time that i heard respecting user user control and i think 2k21 serves as the epitome for a game that does not respect user control canned animations in nba 2k21 for next gen was at an all-time high but understanding the development team they felt they was giving us a product that was completely different from what we actually received and there's something lost in translation there it goes on to say i think the next gen version of nba 2k21 strikes a great balance between 
rewarding taking proper driving angles and respecting contact. Attempting to drive headfirst directly into a defender will stop them in their tracks, lead to charges and force pickup. It's so unfortunate that the development team thinks that this is what the game actually is. And I imagine that they're presenting these courtside reports after a good amount of gameplay testing, after getting their hands on the game and really feeling what it's about. And this is what Mike Wang comes and presents us with in a courtside report saying what he thinks the game actually is. We get the product and it's nothing like this. The one-on-one -on -one game in NBA 2K21 is completely obsolete. The game overall is heavily in favor of the offense and I hope that changes for NBA 2K22. It actually needs to change for us to be able to be competitors in NBA 2K22. I hope you guys found this video helpful and or informative. I know it was long-winded, but again, I feel it's really important we review our past so we can get a better idea of what's going to be given to us in the future. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing as we intend to have a ton of 2K22 content coming your way. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Easy, y'all.